Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Tom Sire from Little Hot Podcast. Today, I have some bonus content for you guys. The bonus content I will be providing for you guys will be in the sport of basketball and the NBA world. If you guys haven't checked out, episode 89 is now available on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So if you haven't watched or listened to the episode just yet, go ahead and check it out on all four of our platforms. But today, in this bonus content I have for you guys, I'll be explaining which teams that I believe have been the most disappointing in the first half of the NBA season in both respective conferences in the Eastern Conference and in the Western Conference. So let's start off with the Eastern Conference. The team I felt like has been the most disappointing to me so far in the first half of the NBA season has been the Atlanta Hawks. This team has definitely not lived up to their expectations that they had set very high for themselves heading into the season. And especially after their trade that they acquired, uh, DeJounte, uh, Murray from the San Antonio Spurs during the summer. Uh, that backcourt duo I said on the podcast was supposed to be as great as a backcourt duo of we saw over the years. They remind me of a duo that could be as special as Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum once were for the Golden State War. Um, excuse me for the uh, Portland Trailblazers just a few years ago. I thought they had the uh, ability to be as special as the Clay Thompson and Steph Curry together. I thought this backcourt duo was going to be one of, if not the best backcourt duo in the Eastern Conference this NBA season. Unfortunately, those expectations have not met up to that level. Uh, for the reason why, uh, for that reason, I should say, why that backcourt duo has not exceeded expectations is one of the reasons why the Atlanta Hawks have been disappointing this year. Uh, the defense is solid on a nightly basis, but however, they're one of the worst offensive teams in the National Basketball Association. So this team does on a nightly basis. When I do have a chance to watch the Atlanta Hawks, they do not have great chemistry on the court on a nightly basis, and the team lacks a lot of shooting depth. That is one of the reasons why they have also been a disappointing team to me this NBA season. Uh, without shooting depth, it's hard to win NBA basketball. We are now in a league where shooting is more important than anything else on a basketball team in the NBA. We see a lot of small ball lineups. We see a lot of teams with a lot of shooting depth that go on to go doing deep playoff runs and especially win NBA championships in this modern day era of the NBA. So when you uh, they lack uh, shooters, they lack uh, shooting depth on that roster. Uh, tr they did not get Trey Young any more help before the NBA trade deadline. Uh, I thought that John Collins was definitely a shoe in pick to be traded before the NBA trade deadline. He's been in discussion for uh, countless seasons being traded away from the Atlanta Hawks. I felt like if they traded him away, they could have got a lot of depth shooting and acquired more shooters on that team. So uh, it's going to be tricky to see what they do in the second half of the season. But what have I've seen over the first half of the NBA season? I have seen the franchise player Trey Young butt heads with the coaching staff, butt heads with the front office, uh, and he seems very unhappy during the NBA season, which is definitely a red red flag for a guy that is one of the best guards in the NBA and your fran your main franchise guy. You always want to keep your franchise guy happy, and Trey Young has expressed on several occasions that he's not happy. Right now, as I record this video during the NBA All-Star break weekend, the Atlanta Hawks find themselves currently at 29-30. and 30. Um, That is right now, they are currently the eighth seed in the uh, Eastern Conference. I do not see them getting out of the first round the way how the Eastern Conference is going to play out in the second half of the season when you have dangerous teams of the Boston Celtics, of the Milwaukee Bucks, of the Philadelphia 76ers, of the Cleveland Cavaliers. A, a, a team you cannot sleep on that has playoff experience in the Miami Heat. There's just too many good teams in the NBA to contest uh, that the Atlanta Hawks are going to have to contest with in the Eastern Conference. I just don't see them making it out of the first round. And I believe if this does continue to happen and, tri and the Atlanta Hawks do become uh, even more disappointing in the second half of the NBA season, I do believe that Trey Young will request a trade in Atlanta and go elsewhere by summer. Uh, that that's who I believe was the most uh, disappointing team in the East. Now, in the Western Conference, the most disappointing team that has been uh, in the first half of the NBA season, in my opinion, has the, been the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I really believe this team would truly be a threat during the summer when I talked about Rudy Gobert, uh, when they acquired Rudy Gobert in a trade with the Utah Jazz, which I'll get to uh, in a few moments. I thought when they acquired Rudy Gobert, I thought the 
Timberwolves were going to be a at least a second round exit. I thought that team was going to be a top four, top five seed come the come uh, playoff time in the Western Conference, a Western Conference that wasn't as uh, dangerous and as loaded as it is now. During the summer, during free agency, it was really wide open. Besides the fact that the Golden State Warriors were still around. Uh, the Phoenix Suns were around by default. Before they got Kevin Durant, I didn't believe in their high expectations to go deep in the playoffs. Uh, and the Denver Nuggets. Uh, and the, uh, no, ex yeah, and the Denver Nuggets and the Memphis Grizzlies. Other than those teams, I thought the Western Conference was really wide open. And I thought it was an A-plus, a slam dunk for acquiring Rudy Gobert. And it's not looking like that so far. Uh, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves really went all the way in to acquire Rudy Gobert uh, in the first place. Uh, giving up a total of five players and four future first-round picks. That is a lot to get for a defensive guy in Rudy Gobert. Uh, and so far, after that trade, the expectations have not been met so far for acquiring a 30-year-old Rudy Gobert, who's one of the best defensive players in the modern-day era of the NBA today. Uh, I really did have high expectations for the big-man duo of Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. I thought this big man duo would be as special as an Evan Mobley and a Jared Allen that we see uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I thought they had the high expectations to be as special as an Al Horford and a Roy Williams in Boston for the Boston Celtics. And obviously, those two have not meshed well together, and the chemistry is still going on, still trying to be built up to this day. And it hasn't really translated much in the win and loss column, which I'll talk about the record in a few moments. Um, this team has been terrible offensively throughout the first half of the NBA season. It's definitely been terrible defensively in the first half of the NBA season. A lot of their wins and losses have translated off the fact they can't put away teams and, uh, with the high-level offense on a nightly basis. The reason why they have uh, translated a lot of losses in the win-loss column is because of their poor defensive play throughout the season. And Rudy Gobert, I thought he was going to be the caliber, uh, caliber player that I thought he was going to be like he was with the Utah Jazz, elevating that defense to a whole new level. And that has not happened whatsoever at all in the first half of the NBA season. Uh, the only player that really contributes on a high on a nightly basis for the Minnesota Timberwolves is Anthony Edwards. That's the only guy that I cannot fault in the Timberwolves struggles. Uh, he's been meeting high expectations for his, uh, for his young career so far, but Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert have definitely disappointed me so far. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves currently find themselves at 31 and 30, currently in the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference. Um, the way out of the Western Conference has definitely took a, a turn for the best, uh, officially becoming the better conference when you talk about competitive teams between themselves and the Eastern Conference. Um, the West is definitely more competitive. Now you have the Phoenix Suns who are a threat with Kevin Durant now. Now you have the Los Angeles Lakers who have gotten a tad bit better after the trade deadline, especially after acquiring D'Angelo Russell. You have the Memphis Grizzlies, that young gritty team you can't count out yet. The Denver Nuggets are going to be hard to beat in a seven-game series when everybody is healthy on the court. The Los Angeles Clippers, you can't count them out yet. The Sacramento Kings are still up there as a top three team in the West. They are not going to dethrone anybody in the Western Conference, and they'll be lucky to let alone make the play-in tournament. The Minnesota Timberwolves, by far to me, have been the most disappointing team in the Western Conference and definitely the most disappointing team in the NBA this NBA season. Let's see if they can turn around or get uh, at least get things a little bit better for the second half of the NBA season. Uh, but that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.